What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we've got some Destiny 2 news coming in the form of this week at Bungie, or should I say this week in Destiny, as Bungie have decided to rebrand the TWAB, we'll talk about that. But also in the update today, they talk about the arrival of Grandmaster Nightfalls, some changes coming to Crucible playlists, as well as the upcoming patch for Destiny 2, which will be update 7102. That will be dropping next Tuesday, so we'll break down some of the changes that they preview there. But we'll also talk about server issues, a new best dressed emblem that players can potentially unlock. And on top of that, Bungie are requesting feedback about the current game. So we do have a few things to talk about in the video today, guys. And as always, I hope you enjoy this one. If you do, a rating below really does help us out. But otherwise, let's get into it. And initially, Bungie don't really touch on this too much, but there have been quite a few server issues in the past day or so. So initially, we had the typical kind of error codes. They were pretty widespread and affecting a lot of players. On top of that, Bungie announced that they would be doing some background maintenance for a full day. And as we can see from the front page of Reddit, a lot of players were discussing this, but there was some emergency maintenance in the night, which as far as I know, the game is now stabilizing, but safe to say there have been a lot of server problems recently, and hopefully this is something that Bungie will address at some point in the near future, on top of the list of other items that a lot of us in the community are discussing. Some of which we'll get to towards the end of the video, because Bungie do ask for some feedback, so we'll talk about that momentarily, but now let's speak about some of the TWAB stuff, and so... Initially, Bungie points out that we owe Kelly an apology, and they say we know that the Supremacy got rewind rounds, and that Tekken Force has a sick PvP role, and that Reconstruction and Bait and Switch make Apex Predator a top tier option for DPS, but that's no reason to put Kelly into such a situation. And a lot of players have stepped into every plate to get double rewards, while others have just cursed their aim over how many Golden Gun or Sleeper Simulant shots they've missed. Either way, the outcome would be the same, a lot of good loot. And so they hope we consider this time well spent, because we do have a bunch of fixes coming to the game next week. So update 7102 will be deployed on June 13th, and that'll be next Tuesday. And they say although we will have the usual patch notes available the moment it's up, we wanted to give you a preview of some of the implemented fixes. So initially, the extra reward awarded by the Last Wish weekly quest, the one handed by Hawthorne, wasn't intentional, so that'll be going away on Tuesday. And so we'll get one deep sight weapon from it, since that was always the plan, and we'll still be able to earn at least another one every week, because the final chest after dumping Riven's Heart gives one per week per account. But of course, there are still a few days until that fix is implemented, so certainly worth taking advantage of if you plan to farm any Last Wish stuff. On top of that though, they say for exotic fixes, the update will re-enable Vesper of Radius since it won't have such explosive behavior with certain weapons anymore. On top of that though, some braces will have their increased duration of solar grenades restored. And after Saladin had a very long conversation with Kepri's horn, the strange interaction with this Titan exotic helmet allowed it to have been fixed, so it will also be re-enabled. So at least some of those things will be coming back online, and they say, to name a few other fixes, they also have one for the issue that allowed certain grenades to go through barricades and Ward of Dawn. But on top of that, they say they're toning down the new collective obligation perk in PvP, which will be a 10% damage buff instead of 20, and they're giving a new Mercurial Overwatch competitive sniper rifle a bigger reticle when scoping so it's easier to use. So a mixed bag of updates that they preview right there, some of them beneficial, some of them less so, Although hopefully we will get more fixes than that, as there are a bunch of glaring issues with the current kind of seasonal content and situations in the game. So hopefully there'll be more than that, but I will have to keep you posted on Tuesday. Next though, they say, are you ready for some early Grandmaster Nightfalls? And of course, these will be available earlier. And they say the reason for this is simple, without the seasonal power climb, and with the requirement level changes we added during Season 19, we believe we can successfully launch them earlier. So Grandmasters are coming on week four, which will mean we have the chance to earn exotic materials and adept weapons starting next Tuesday. They do point out though that the Conqueror Gilding node is still planned to be opened on week 7, so for now get ready to face the Lightblade if you're aiming to get the adept version of the Wendio GL3 Heavy Grenade Launcher next week. And on top of that, the Loaded Question Fusion Rifle and the Braytech Osprey Rocket Launcher will be featured in the following two weeks. So we get a bit of a roadmap of upcoming Nightfall weapons there as well. Wendigo next week, then for week 5, we should see Loaded Question, and week 6 will be the Braytech Osprey, at least based on the order that they've mentioned those weapons. So let us know down below if you plan to jump into Grandmasters. And next they say, for PvP, Supremacy will be added to the Relentless Rotator in Crucible starting next week. So... If you've enjoyed having Supremacy back for Guardian Games, for example, it's cool that that will be a part of the Crucible playlist in the next week. Safe to say those playlists need a bit of updating and some love. 
So that in itself is at least a positive. Next, though, they talk about the Trials of Osiris emblem, the dazzling iridescence, and they say it was meant to be rewarded to the best of the best, those who could go flawless while earning a flight of the Pigeon Medal, which is to lead in score for the entire game in every win along the way on that flawless card. But an issue caused the emblem to be awarded to anyone who made it to the lighthouse, which, while it's a challenging endeavor, made seeing the emblem a little more common than we'd hoped. So in the upcoming patch, there'll be a fix for this with two different points. So starting with Week 4's Trials, on June 16th, the emblem will no longer drop from the flawless chest for those who have not achieved the requirements. But for those who already have the emblem, they'll be able to retain it in their collections, but will not be able to equip it unless they complete the requirements after the patch has gone live. So kind of a frustrating one, I guess, if you did earn that one. Although Bungie did have specific rules in mind, it just so happens that those rules weren't working properly, so... Kind of good that they're respecting the actual requirements for the emblem, but equally sort of frustrating if you did get access to it when you perhaps shouldn't have. Let us know what you think about that. And here for the known issues, they say for advanced focusing, due to an issue causing exotic focusing not to grant intended rewards, they have temporarily disabled advanced decryption focusing. Hopefully that's another one that'll be fixed soon. They also say some UI pricing elements in the Eververse store will be disabled with the release of the hotfix next week. And they note that the displayed price is the correct one. I'm not sure if that reference is pre or post patch, to be honest, but I guess we'll find out. The for known issues we can see, they talk about Kepri's horn. They also say that Helm of Saint 14 is not functioning as expected, which is sort of vague. But also players can get stuck out of the final boss arena after self-reviving in Ghosts of the Deep. They also say that spending salvage keys after a salvage activity is not providing progress towards the spend salvage keys triumph, and instead progressing the spend deep dive keys triumph. And then the bump in the night weapon pattern triumph requires the season 17 season pass. They also highlight that the standard fair bounty doesn't gain progress on kinetic weapon kills. The Warlock's Courtier Longcoat chest ornament has a gap beneath the right arm. Maybe it's for breathability, I don't know. They also say fourth magic on Verity's brow isn't functioning correctly in PvP, and the new Pacific Epitaph grenade launcher is doing less damage than intended to stasis crystals, so hopefully there'll be some fixes for that. Also in the TWAB though, they say that starting this week, the Destiny blog will be named This Week in Destiny, as opposed to This Week at Bungie. And ultimately that is because Bungie have another title in the works, which eventually they'll be talking about. So instead of the TWAB, we'll be seeing the TWID from now on. So there you go, maybe useful information. And finally, there's a section in the TWAB where they ask players to share their drippiest designs. So they're looking for lovely outfitted guardians looking super fly. And the one they shared on social media with the hashtag drown in the drip. And there'll be a chance to unlock the emblem you can see on screen as well when you share those. So details for that are in the TWAB, which is linked below. The last thing to mention right here, and recently Bungie have put up a thread asking players to give feedback on the game. And of course, the timing is interesting. There are some mixed feelings about this season. And even outside of the season itself, there is general player fatigue. Whether it's a touch of boredom through lack of updates for ritual content, players getting fed up with the season model itself, or frustrated by some of the technical issues with the game. Depending who you ask, it is a bit of a mixed bag. But the Destiny 2 team on Twitter said, we're putting a call for any ability, armor, build crafting, and weapon specific questions or feedback you have about the current live game. And so they ask for feedback on this Twitter thread right here as well as questions. And firstly, they say give us feedback or questions surrounding your guardian's abilities, but they also separately ask for feedback on weapons and exotics, then exotic armor and build crafting, as well as general feelings about the game. So if you want the opportunity to give any feedback, it'll certainly be worth jumping in on that thread. Of course, keep it civil if you want to be heard. And I'd say for me in general, of course this isn't a feedback video, so we won't go into a massive amount of detail, but but you need to keep working on making weapons more interesting. I think exotics overall are in a pretty good spot, and we've got a lot of strong stuff in the game already in general, but looking at new season weapons, some of them struggle to compete with what we've had previously in terms of power, but also in terms of being unique. Often we get too many kind of reskinned weapons, and I still think Bungie are missing opportunities for unique weapons and enemy themed loot in the game. While it certainly is a lot of work for Bungie, I feel like there is a lot of excitement that players aren't really getting from acquiring weapons in general, and Bungie could definitely do more with stuff like the Nightfall weapons. But again, looking at the season weapons right now, there are some decent ones for sure, but on the most part, they don't seem to be particularly interesting players. And while of course power creep is also an issue, I do think we need to see more stuff like Vault Shot, 
destabilizing rounds and all those kind of bonuses. But then of course, also for the season model, most players would agree that we need more engaging pursuits. And it's an interesting one this season, we don't have that power grind there. And that does bring mixed feedback, not everyone agrees that the power grind should be a thing, not everyone agrees that we shouldn't have a power grind this season, some players are saying they simply don't feel like there's much left to do. And I do think overall a power system overhaul is probably what's needed to make it more interesting. But separate to that we need more ritual content, ritual activities like Gambit and Crucible need more updates, both in terms of gameplay and activities, but also pursuits, and they need more new loot and unique loot once again. We're kind of at a point where there are a few core parts of the game that really need some love. And I think Bungie should be investing more time into the rewards, making rewards unique. Again, is going after the buzzard sidearm inside of Nightfalls the most interesting possible thing we could be going for in the activity? Are season weapons or even the dungeon weapons as intriguing and unique as they could be? I'm not sure that's the case right now. So those are some of the things that stand out to me, but again, everyone's going to feel different. There'll be more conversation about PvP, balancing, technical issues, and so on. So give us your thoughts down below, but probably more important, give your thoughts to Bungie on that feedback thread. Just remember to keep it civil if you want to be heard. And for today, guys, that's what we have to speak about in the video. So... I hope this one has been useful and interesting. If it has, a rating below really does help us out on the channel. Plus, be sure to get subscribed and I'll keep you posted with more content. Otherwise, though, for today, I appreciate you tuning in and I will catch you guys very soon.